Hi guys and welcome to episode 19 of Dollhouse Build and here you can see the divider has been placed into position um, I did need to take a couple of, well, a tiny bit off that side slightly to make it go into where I wanted, but I did ask for it to be the exact size of the aperture because I didn't want any gaps down the side once the wallpaper's on, and I think once the wallpaper's on that, that would be perfect. Obviously, there's a little gap at the top, but again, the coving will cover that. So I'm really happy with how that looks. Um, I'm going to get it out now because it is... As you can see, quite stiff. It's just sort of standing in place there. I've not glued it or anything. So I need to take this out, she says. That's it. So that I can obviously add that wallpaper on this back side. And then that lovely William Morris wallpaper will be going on that side, which is the front, which is the part that you'll see. Um, from the front so we'll get the wallpaper on um, same as last time just PVA glue with a spreader I'm going to use that Gorilla Glue put the wallpaper on and then I will trim around the edges hi guys okay so we have the wallpaper on this side and we have the other side done as well and we're all ready to go just a bit of glue for the door and we've run into a problem so when I asked for this divider to be cut, I said obviously the space I wanted for um, the door and that I wanted it on this side and that's how I wanted it cut and I gave all the measurements and he said, yeah, don't worry, I know how much a standard um, size dollhouse door frame is so I'll just cut you that opening and I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Not thinking that my dollhouse doors may be a slightly different size to what is normal and yeah, they are, they are bigger which means that as it stands, if I just put it in as best as I can, it's basically not gonna fit there and it's too big there as well. So I've just took a little bit of wallpaper off to give me an idea of how much I need to go down to. <laughs> oh, it's all fun and games, isn't it? Um, and I'm just trying to work out the best way to do this, whether I can take a saw to it or whether I can just try and sand it with a Dremel, which would be my preferred option because now I've obviously got all the wallpaper on as well. So, yeah, probably my fault that I didn't double check the aperture size and give him my door dimensions because they are bigger, it seems, than the average size one. Um, that was a mistake on my part. And then the second mistake was obviously not checking the door fitted before I put all the wallpaper on. So, yeah, it's just, <laughs> nothing's ever easy, is it? So, yeah, I'm going to start, obviously, sanding this or cutting it or whatever and see how we go to try and get that door in. Okay, and there we have it. I'm just holding that door shut because it's on a slight angle backwards. So, if I let it go, it opens out. But you can see that that is in now with the wallpaper. That wasn't a fun process, I've, I've got to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a little bit stressful right at the end, but we managed to get it in. It's a perfect fit. It fits in really snug. There's no gaps at the side, which is what I wanted. Um, and once the top bit goes on, there's just such a slight, slight amount there that the coving will cover it. So I'm I'm really happy with how that looks, actually. Um, like I said, it's very garish, I am aware. And you'll either love it or hate it. Um, and then again, if you open that up, that's going to take you into which is effectively now the closet. And I would have a little toilet that I've put in there. Um, so yeah, happy with that. That's my plant pot that I'm gonna decorate and put a plant in. But yeah, that's just another little bit done. I've got the whole way done there. And now this little bit. So we'll start thinking about getting this fireplace in. That needs to be glued in. And then we need to sort out the flooring for these two areas as well. And then obviously the skirting and the coving. And there we are. That's it with the roof bit added on now. So it will obviously be a bit lighter in there once we get a light in. Um, and, you know, we already have that window in. So it actually looks probably a little bit darker on camera. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, basement front and how it will look and I'm I'm pretty happy with how that's uh, turned out Right, so the next job that I'm going to be getting on with is the flooring for this part here and the cloak room I'm just going to be using wood strips 
I have some trusty wood strips here from um, left over from another project, but they're basically just um, spruce strips. I think they're about five or six mils um, wide and probably about a, a mil or 1.5 mil, I think, thick. Um, but they just make, I find these tend to make really good um, wooden floor. They don't warp or anything. I knew, know people use coffee stirrers and things, and I do want to try that, but I do like these um, thicker planks. So I'm going to be using this, and if you don't have one of these, if you're doing any type of flooring or, in fact, any woodwork, in fact, you know what? If you're getting a doll's house, just buy one. <laughs> I think they're about £15 or something like that. Um, it's a great piece of kit to be able to cut strips of wood. So how I do flooring, um, I will start, obviously, on that back bit first. Now, I've not glued this bit on yet, as you know, so I'm going to just knock that off. And then I can get into that back to do the flooring. I'm just going to start at this front bit first. Um, and I literally just get the strips, cut them into sort of six inch pieces, roughly. I'm not too exact on how I cut them. And then uh, I'll show you how I, uh, how I lay them. Okay, so this is the back part with the uh, roof took off and you can see down there, I've just laid that first strip in. I'm going to start, I always say go front to back and then if there's a weird odd shape or it's not quite level or anything, it'll look odd at the back and you won't really notice it as opposed to the front. It doesn't matter so much here because you're not really going to see it that much, but I'm just going to do it the same way I always do it. Um, I've got the strips cut. Um, I've cut these into roughly five, six inches ago. Um, basically just put them in three or four layers and then just trim them using this um, and you can see they're all sort of standard sizes um, again some are bigger than others I'm not really bothered you can make it as accurate as you want every single one to be the same size then that's fine but obviously you will get to the edge where you're sort of doing them different sizes and things anyway so I'm not all that bothered if they're roughly the same size that's fine for me so yeah I'm going to work my way front to back get all those pieces in um, I'm looking to get this then sand sanded and stained um, and then we'll look at putting some skirting on and then the coving is going to be a bit tricky because obviously this roof needs to go on and I, I need it, the coving to be under that I want it to be quite snug but obviously I don't want it to impact that roof going on so I'll have a little bit of a think how to do that but yeah we'll get on with this bit um, front to back and we'll get gluing some of those boards in Okay, so the wood is now in there and that has been stained just the same colour as the rest of the house, that dark oak. It's just had one coating on so far, so I'm going to put another coating on it and then I'm just going to stain it with some clear varnish. Um, and since then, I've just been measuring up for some skirting. So the skirting is exactly the same as we put in the hallway. Um, and if you are doing any kind of skirting, definitely get one of these because they're so good for doing the um, mitres, the 45 degree angles that you need to make them obviously go into the corners perfectly well. And then I've just numbered the back, number five, like I have um, shown you before, just to so that I know which bit goes where. I do it in a clockwise motion of, of the room. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get on with that. I think I'm going to paint this white um, for that room. Um, and then obviously we'll start working on the coving. So that is all the skirting around there now, um, even in that little corner, which I know when the roof's on, you're not even going to see that little bit. But I don't know, there's just something about just making sure it's done properly um, that I needed to do. Um, and you might be able to see it if you look in that window, I guess, ever so slightly. Certainly that piece on the end you would be able to. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty how that's looking now. And if you look through here, this is, you can just tell it looks so much more finished when you can see some skirting on through there so um yeah happy with how that's turned out and we just need to start looking at getting the coving sorted now okay so i've just put the top back on it's not glued on it's just sat there um and i just wanted to show this coving that i've done so i've got the coving i've cut them at a mitered angle and it's all literally ready to go onto the roof in there the problem is I can't reach all the way back around there 
and if I'm putting sort of a toilet and a sink and something in and I need to move it or change it, if I've glued this roof on top, I'm going to really struggle. So I'm just having a think about what to do. The thing that I can think to do at the minute, the best way to tackle this is to glue these on, but not glue the top. So just literally glue them on, you see what I mean, to the, to the side. And then this top can just slot on and then I can knock it off when I need to knock it off to access that room um, or to do anything I need to. The problem obviously with that is that I need to be able to put these in and glue them in place um, on the sides but also so, so, so it's tucked up against the roof if you like when it's on. So I somehow need to get in there to glue them on while the roof's on yeah, you can see exactly where I'm going with this. So I'm having a bit of a problem just deciding how best to do that. So I wanted to leave this video um, with the coving and everything complete so that that back room's done. But actually, I'm going to wait a little minute just to um, have a little think about the best way to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of end this video here. There's just a couple of things that I wanted to go over um, with you. Uh, firstly, I wanted to show you these, which I've got for the kitchen. So it's like a rustic, um, basically a rustic slate. I absolutely love these. I've wanted them for ages on a project. Um, and you can see they're from Stacey's Miniature Masonry, which I absolutely love as the quality is, is outstanding. So I'll just show you these. Okay, and uh, here they are in the flesh. If I can get just a, a couple out to show you. Um, but yeah, you can see it's proper slate. They're sort of quite thin, probably only a couple of millimetres thin. They're quite large. They're probably about an inch by an inch and a half or so. Probably about two centimetres by three or four centimetres. So yeah, they're quite large. Um, because of the way that I'm going to be putting them together, I'm not sure if I'm going to be leaving a gap and adding any more to or anything or if I'm just going to sort of put them together like that, which will leave quite a nice finish, I think, on the kitchen floor. So I'll have a decide about that. Um, I can't remember how much these were, but they're not, they're not obviously cheap because it is a really high quality premium product. And I would suggest with your own house, obviously, you can spend as much or as little as you want. There are a load of videos out there with people making amazing floorings from um, all kinds of stuff. I've, in my uh, other house, have used, um, like, Fablon um, for some of the walls to stick on as wallpaper, which has worked out really well. So you don't have to spend a fortune. What I did with these is I actually asked for them for Christmas, and that's a great idea if you are wanting some premium products. And you don't necessarily want to be spending, you know, a huge amount all the time. It's a good idea to just, you know, ask friends or family, you know, that you want that a certain thing for, you know, maybe your birthday or Christmas. And, and often they'll be more than happy to purchase something that you want rather than just, you know, getting something for the sake of uh, of getting it. So, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. But, yeah, they're, they're not the cheapest, but they are, as you can see, um, really, really high quality. And I'm really looking forward to um, getting those uh, in the kitchen. Okay, so I'm going to leave this video here. Um, I can't believe how many subscribers I've got. I think I'm up to about 380 now, which is completely crazy um, that you want to follow along. But yeah, I'm really happy and, and I hope, um, you know, that, that everyone's finding value. It's looking a little bit of a mess. Obviously, it is a bit of a storage unit in there in the kitchen at the minute. That's where the slate flooring will go. Um, the hallway's pretty much finished. I've just got the other stairs to to put to uh, place in, which will obviously come up there to the uh, main floor, first floor of the house. And then that back room, apart from the coving's done. Um, in here, I just need to finish off the coving. Um, I need to do the floor. I think I'm not going to glue this fireplace in yet because I do want a working fireplace and, and I do need to really start thinking about electrics. I keep saying it and I've got some ideas, but the power unit that I want is about £100, so... Um, yeah, it's just going to take a little bit of um, thinking about and planning for that. But I think that's going to be the next um, big project. Um, but there's the outside to start now with the front part of this house, this basement. Um, so you've watched me put um, a lot of bricks on um, sort of the areas that are going to be outside. So I think after this, it's time to um, start as assembling that now. So I think that will be the next video. But yeah, just want to say a massive thank you for everybody who is following along, who, uh, you know, is, is liking the videos um, and it, hopefully it's giving you some ideas and, and thank you very much for all the encouragement. I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far. 
please stick with me. I did mention on the first episode, um, you know, that I've, I've, I, it wouldn't be a regular thing because I'm, I'm just doing this off my own back and I'm so busy. I mean, at the minute, I've just had so many life changes over the last six months and, and change of jobs and everything that unfortunately I've just not been able to give it as much time as I'd like. Um, so I can't be as regular with the videos as I'd like to be, but um, I will try and obviously not leave it as long for the next one. So thanks very much, guys. And until the next episode, I will see you then. Take care.